In this video, we'll be discussing the negativity in the WoW community. What is it? Why are people doing it? Is it even justified? Yes, of course it is. And to start this off, let's discuss negativity bias. Negativity bias is a psychological phenomena where we treat negative events as more important than positive ones. For example, you're having a great day at work. Things are going well, you listen to an excellent radio show or podcast on the commute to work, but then a co-worker makes an offhanded remark that you just find irritating. Then you find yourself stewing over those words for the rest of the day. And then when you eventually get home and someone asks how your day was, your reply is that it was terrible. Even though it was overall pretty good, except for that one negative incident. This is a pretty common occurrence with people, and research shows that it's most likely just rooted in basic evolution. The tendency to pay attention to bad things and overlook the good things could have been literally a matter of life and death. And those who are more attuned to danger and paid more attention to bad things were just more likely to survive. And the basics of negativity bias is that when presented with two equally important pieces of information, you'll treat the negative one as more important, even if by an objective measure, they're exactly the same in importance. This is why bad things tend to grab our attention. Studies show that negative news is more likely to be perceived as truthful, since negative information draws greater attention. It's seen as having more validity. If you've ever seen someone say they're just giving their honest opinions, or they're just a very truthful person, it's almost always followed by a negative opinion or a negative statement. Because in most colloquial English language, the term being real is synonymous with pointing out negative flaws. And of course, if you don't believe me, I'll have actual links to scientific studies in the video description that you can read yourself, and a great article which summarizes it for you if you don't want to look through scientific papers because they're quite boring. Now, let's go over a fun little statistical analysis. You see, I, the person creating this video about negativity, actually puts out a lot of negative videos, so I have a great set of data by just looking over the numbers of the videos on my other channel. I have two main types of videos over there, the top 10 best of, and the top 10 worst of. And if I take the numbers of those videos, average it out, remove the outliers in the top and bottom 5% for some of the best possible data we can get, the premium stuff, the kind of numbers that would make your statistics teacher proud, the worst of videos perform three times better on average. And in statistical terms, that's ridiculously significant. It's not something as low as like a 5% difference or even a more moderate 25% difference. It's a 200% difference in views. Negative videos just get more attention because people are more likely to click on them. And then YouTube rewards those videos by recommending them more because people are clicking on them. And the attractive topics will just keep drawing in more views thanks to being recommended to more people, which just kind of repeats the cycle. The YouTube algorithm has a system of where the rich get richer and you can't get much richer than making a negative topic video. Although I will say, there are diminishing returns to negativity, but for the most part that doesn't matter, and the benefits outweigh the negatives to the point that you could legitimately just make a channel dedicated to only covering negative topics and perform pretty well. Now, I'm sure many of you can think of a couple of channels or WoW fan sites that are very negative with their opinions on the game, and they get lots of views because of psychology and the YouTube algorithm rewarding those opinions more than the more moderate, neutral opinions. And to an extent, I have no problem with this. Criticism itself is not bad, and making negative videos isn't inherently bad either. If it was, I wouldn't make so many of them myself. Really, it kind of just goes into the specific kinds of criticisms, some kinds of criticism is just inherently better than others, and some of it can even be downright toxic. Let's take a look at a post from a developer from another video game community, Paradox. Before closing, I'd like to note a few things on the subject of giving feedback. When I first started at Paradox, the direct line between community and developers was a major plus for me, because I like the idea of talking to the community without having to run every post past three different marketing departments first. However, this kind of direct community access comes at a heavy cost for us. As many of you have noticed, we have gotten a little sparse in these forums in the last few months, or even years. The reason for this is that often we do face a debate culture that is not enjoyable to take part in, where it is taken as a given that the devs are either lazy or incompetent, and where everything we do is viewed through that lens. Not only is it incredibly demoralizing to spend months of your life creating something, only to see the people you made it for tear it to shreds, it is also a debate that gives no one anything. 
We aren't paid to wade through pages of abuse to find a few nuggets of useful feedback, and so the feedback is not acted on. A lot of you have access to sources and languages we don't speak or have studied some detail that we aren't aware of. Such feedback is very useful. Just a few weeks ago, someone sent me a plan of the Turkish Railway in 1936 taken from an old Turkish book, so I was able to use that update to the Turkish Railway setup at GameStart. We're not looking for fawning adoration, although we will certainly accept it, or a forum in which our decisions can't be discussed with a critical eye. We want to have your feedback but there is no point to it if it can't be delivered with a minimum of respect for each other. If you want to have a forum where developers are willing to go answer your questions, then it is also your responsibility to build a place where we feel welcome, and where we can disagree in a productive and professional manner. It costs you nothing to assume that we are acting in good faith. None of us wake up in the morning to go to work in order to do a bad job. Now, on an unrelated note, let's play a fun little game. Let's go over to the WoW forums and type in one little phrase, followed by pretty much anything. And that phrase is, why does Blizzard hate blank? The fun thing about this game is that no matter what you type in for that blank, you'll find something in the WoW forums. Let's start with an easy one. Why does Blizzard hate the Alliance? Now let's try, why does Blizzard hate the Horde? Now let's try, why does Blizzard hate Night Elves? Why does Blizzard hate Battle Pets? Why does Blizzard hate Trains? Each time you're bound to find a thread or two about even the most niche topics, and there's a good chance someone is 100% convinced that Blizzard just hates that particular thing. Now, this is just a fun little game that was mentioned to me by another YouTuber who doesn't make WoW videos, and definitely has nothing to do with the current topic. So, getting back on topic, constructive criticism in the negativity. There's this assumption I see a lot whenever I'm reading negative posts about the game online, either on forums, reddit threads, or just YouTube comment sections, since people will like to complain about the game on just random videos of mine that have nothing to do with their complaints. And a lot of the time, I see this underlying assumption that the developers themselves are purposefully trying to do a bad job. Like, for example, the Covenant campaign. The Covenant campaign, for basically all four of them, is mostly required in order to max out your renown, and you get some neat rewards for doing it. So it's something that pretty much everyone has to do. And in that vein, the questing is ridiculously easy, and it's basically there just to show you the story. So I've seen complaints about it, which basically go along the lines of, why is required content so ridiculously mind-numbingly easy when Blizzard has proven that they can make solo content fun? And because the content is so easy for an experience, which is basically the culmination of the storyline of fighting off against the big bad evil guy, why is it that it's so easy you could AFK through half of it and still succeed? And you know what? Very fair criticism. I didn't even think of that as a problem, but now that's been pointed out, why do they make it so easy? Well, it's because the developers are literally brain dead and couldn't make a good game if they tried. And the only reason they force you to do it is to increase engagement numbers, because they don't care about you having fun, and actively work against the players whenever possible. Oh, and also, they're out of touch. Now, the premise of this complaint is entirely reasonable. The conclusion is not. This is an excellent example of unproductive criticism. The flaw pointed out is a pretty minor complaint, all things considered, but it is pointing out something which could be perceived as a legitimate flaw. Although the conclusion drawn from that is just to assume the developers did it on purpose because they're being malicious. Now, here's the thing with the developers. I'm sure many of you have seen the articles about how not well paid most of them are in comparison to other gaming studios or tech companies that require the same skill sets, and yet developers are clamoring to get jobs at Blizzard, and they post very excitedly on Twitter whenever they land a job there, because there's tons of passionate, talented people who want to work on the game. If anything, I would assume the complete opposite from the developers. You can make more money by just making videos about World of Warcraft than being a developer on the game. But they do it because they're very passionate about it. Or at least the game design itself. And game design is very complicated and you don't always want to give players exactly what they want. That was one of the main arguments as to why people wanted Classic WoW. To remove all the conveniences that Blizzard gave players because they asked for them. So the underlying assumption that all negative traits in the game are done because the developers are malicious just seems wrong and it's more likely they're just trying new things and just not really hitting the mark. That's where the quote comes in with everyone assuming the worst intentions of all game designs. And the example I gave with the Covenant campaign is the real one I found on the internet, from a prominent source too. I will say though, that bad feedback like this is thankfully not very prevalent in popular YouTubers at least. I think Asmongold, for example, does a great job with giving constructive criticism, He's one of the biggest WoW critics and is very vocal about his dislikes of certain parts of the game, but does so in a constructive manner 
without assuming ill intention by the developers, whether you agree with or like the guy or not. I personally disagree with some of his opinions on the game, but that's because everybody plays and cares about different things in the game, which is a good thing to keep note of when getting all of your criticism from only one source. So let's take two statements. One of them is that the developers only designed the game in a way to increase engagement metrics. The other, that the developers designed the game in a way so that players will have fun. The statement on the left is a negative opinion, and the statement on the right is a positive one. At first glance, the statement on the left seems more true because it's negative, whereas information about the subject is pretty equal. It's about just as much information that players have access to, which would suggest either one being the case with probably a little bit more information pointing towards the second opinion. However, if you state the first opinion, no one will question your sources, and in fact, you'll be hailed for telling it like it is. If you quote the second opinion, people will immediately respond with hesitance, and probably ask how you know this, or at the very least question the validity of that statement. Even though, objectively speaking, we have about as much information on both of them being true. Although, having one of the opinions will have you being called a truth teller, and the other will be met with less favorable comments, generally in the variety of being a paid blizzard shill. You have to justify your opinion more if it's a positive one, and you don't have to explain anything if it's a negative one. Now, one last point. Every year on April Fools, I make a video on my channel where I argue an unconventional point, like on how Garrosh did nothing wrong, or how Warlords of Draenor wasn't that bad of an expansion. And these videos are written in a way where I'm not telling any lies, and in fact, use nothing but facts. And the videos are presented in a way that makes the points come across as kind of reasonable. And pretty much every year the videos are a big success, and change a lot of people's minds on those topics. Just remember that a lot of news videos and scathing criticisms written on public forums present their information in the same way as my April Fool's videos. They're not telling any lies, they're bringing up good points even. It's just the conclusions are about as ridiculous as saying Garrosh is a good guy. And that's the real problem of the negativity in the World of Warcraft community. Constructive criticism is great and healthy for the game. It's just the criticism that's on the same level as my April Fool's Day videos are a little bit toxic. And to end off, here's a quote from the WoW Diary, a journal of computer game development, to kind of put it into perspective that people have been complaining about the game since before it came out, and there isn't any more bad things about the game today than there were in the early days. We just have a lot more people on social media that can make their opinions heard louder than before. This quote is in relation to when Blizzard added the rested experience system we have today. In addition to designing the class mechanics, Rob Pardo can take much of the credit for making WoW accessible to casual users. He came up with an elegant corpse retrieval system that ameliorated the post-death anguish previous MMOs embraced. He made leveling much faster and implemented a rest system that rubber-banded the rate at which hardcore and casual players leveled. Instead of punishing players who played the game nonstop, Rob rewarded casual players for taking sensible breaks. As per usual, the fans on the forums went berserk about Blizzard turning WoW into a Care Bear game, and that we were forcing customers to limit their time. But after a week, the hysteria blew over. The public reaction was annoying, but Rob and the designers held their ground. The rest state bonus system remained after tweaking only a couple of its values.